Um, so we have two pieces of software that we will introduce today. One is called Red Hat Mobile Application Platform, short form RH Map. Um, I conduct training on RH Map. If you're interested, um, we can talk after this about um, aspects of RH Map that, uh, that you may want me to talk a little bit more about. Red Hat Tree Scale API Management Platform. Uh, this came from an acquisition not too long ago. Um, you may have heard of API management. So this is the API management platform. Both of them have a similarity, a common similarity, a few, um, a few traits, including number one is open source, number two is built on top of Red Hat OpenShift. Right? So you could potentially run this on OpenShift Online, which is our public pass, which you could uh, just simply go to openshift.com, I do believe that's uh, accessible through Wi-Fi and uh, your mobile phones. You can set up an account right now while I speak. You can start using it. Um, you can also install this on-premise. So in other words, it's like a hybrid cloud installation. Uh, so what you do is just install the cloud in your data center and start using it. So if you use this as part of uh, GPT BTC's infrastructure, this is what it looks like. Remember Block Cipher, the primary data vendor? So GPT BTC resells the data. It accesses the data through something called a REST API. Uh, represent, uh, represent, uh, representational uh, state transfer. So you may have got a web services. Uh, that's not going out of stock. So web services are still around. It's just that uh, the the Vogue and Vogue version or edition or red our uh, uh, web services is now REST. So if you're using all good old WSDL, uh, that's still around. I'm not sure how long, but Block Cipher extends beyond. Um, their own enterprise through REST API, so their own partners and vendors could just, or clients could just consume a real-time Bitcoin data through REST API. So um, TreeScale API management platform provides plugins and gateways. So you might be thinking, all right, I'm throwing big names like mobile app platform and TreeScale West, the open source stuff. TreeScale API management platform is built on top of a web, a high-speed, high-performance web server called Nginx. A partner of Red Hat. And Nginx, if you do know a bit of uh, the history of Nginx, it's built by Lua Engineering. You know, uh, online multi and intensely multiplayer games. The good ones are built on Lua, LUA. So, <clears throat> of course, others are built on maybe C. But Lua really look like, it looks like C. I think it's C. So, LUA, that's Lua. Um, Lua modules comprise of the entire API management platform. Later on in the demo, you'll be seeing things like um, integration routes, which sometimes we, we affectionately call it API cast. API cast. Uh, those have Lua modules underneath powering it. And of course, uh, the mobile app, it's built on Node.js, powered by Node.js runtime running on top of our Irish Mac, uh, mobile app platform. So if um, you would look at new services you want to aggregate, you want to aggregate on top of this infrastructure, you can do that. So all of which would be um, <coughs> consolidated on top of an API management platform like this. And remember Nginx, I mentioned already, in case you want to customize the proxy, uh, add more plugins in there, um, pick up Lua, a, a Lua technical manual and start coding, right? Okay, so when I developed this together with a colleague, the, same, the gentleman's name is Mr. Shad Darby from Philadelphia, uh, you, you'll see his uh, uh, particulars at the end, Twitter uh, uh, address, GitHub address. So the first stage, we built a client app that connects to a cloud app. Pretty much we're using uh, a Node.js module known as FHMS. Um, if you have heard of uh, FH, it, it really is a short form for the upstream project for Red Hat mobile app platform called Feet Henry. Um, named after because of the engineers um, love for uh, hurling, finds Irish sport, um, not curling, and uh, this is not Winter Olympics. Uh, I think um, there is a really good player by the name of Henry, so they named the upstream feet Henry. Now the next phase was to add an MBAS service. What is MBAS? It's mobile backend as a, as a service. It is basically a REST service, exposed thing, say, <coughs> rich. 
intellect, um, intellectual property, business logic on top of the cloud app through a REST API. So MS service uh, is a connector or sorts into the cloud world. All right, then we of course did all this on whiteboarding. He's in Philly, I'm in Singapore. We collaborate over uh, conference calls and uh, we, did, we did a bit of whiteboarding. I mean, make sure he, he got a snapshot of this so we know what to code. Okay, we're getting closer to the demo. Now, again, remind ourselves that um, you know, we could do a lot. We could basically extend this use case of payment processing in the future. No thanks to technology, or thanks to technology like MBAS services. And the fact that uh, TreeScale mobile, um, I'm sorry, TreeScale API management platform is all about uh, REST services aggregation. You could potentially extend to multiple kinds of services, build more multiple mobile app uh, front ends as well. So I know I'm going a bit fast, and some of these um, um, commands, you might want to take a photo, you could type it into uh, your computer if you can turn it over. I'll just, just take this all back as homework. And I'll probably have some time to run through some of the curl commands. Now, of course, one of the best ways to test APIs is through curl. URL, if you want to call it. Um, anybody not use this before? Okay, everyone's used to it. Right, curl or um, uh, some of the other command line HTTP test tools are pretty neat. I got curl, I swear by it. So you could do curl commands, the first one being, and that would be used, is already mapped or baked into my mobile app. You can retrieve blocks and transactions. The tail end of blockchain as uh, of now. Thanks to Block Cipher, uh, you could uh, get a couple of Bitcoin transactions using a longer command, and you're gonna have a known address such as this. Put a little uh, um, question mark limit equals two, and you can also get um, the height, or rather the block based on the height of the um, blockchain. Ah, I'm not gonna go into definitions in, in Bitcoin too much. That's um, stuff that uh, you have to research on, like exactly what is uh, height and what congregates or what uh, attributes a Bitcoin transaction. Okay, so why would you, or as a Bitcoin startup, look into things like API access control? Well, the answer is simple. People that don't pay, they don't get access, right? I mean, money making, right? This is all about profits. So if they don't buy the right subscriptions or they have utilized all these uh, transactional quota for the month, then it's time to uh, shut them down. I'm going to show a demo on that. Um, there's also billing and metrics, so you could get invoices, call invoices at the end of the month or a billing cycle. So you could tell all the um, GPT, BTC startup clients this is how much you have been incurring. And of course, I keep mentioning this and probably mention it to death today the proxy layer that allows aggregation of services. That's important because it's all about growing. The your uh, extending your reach into the ecosystem, growing your cred, your street cred with uh, uh, the ecosystem, building relationships, right? So yeah, let's get to the demo. So two aspects of what you want to do uh, within this that the scope of this demo is to look from the perspective of a mobile app developer, which is also <coughs> the perspective of the mobile app user, the client. You might want to look from the integration architect's view because the person really looks um, at the proxy layer, and on behalf of the business, the guys that uh, want to forecast to their investors or the venture cap companies that invest in them, um, the growth plan for the next five to ten years. And the growth plan really rides on top of the proxy layer, right? If you know that you can scale because of the infrastructure scales, you got a peace of mind. This is a screenshot of the tool called Mobile App Developer. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. The, mobile app platform used by the mobile app developer. And as you can see from the three layer view early on, phase two, remember that? You had client, you had the cloud app, and cloud app runs the business logic, and of course the third layer, the interface to the rest of the world, the MBAS service, you get them all in one view. Now, if you could help me out, just, um, I do believe I updated this, I want to get the earlier version. Do a QR code scan, and download the app now. Otherwise, we just go to using a web browser, and I know, I know some of us use, some of us use iPhones. <laughs> I, I know I got both Android and iPhone. This will not work with your iPhone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I went cheap. I, I, I did not get that uh, uh, 
Apple developer subscription. It's for so, free now. I'm sorry. It's for free now. Oh, see. <laughs> I, should have, I should have found out. Okay, so in case um, you're using a phone that does not support um, the Android build, this is Android build, by the way. I might want to flip open your web browser and go to people.redhat.com slash hchen slash fossbtc. Okay. This URL is just gonna link you to the same app, so. <coughs> if you need it, just yell out. So I keep going, these are screenshots of three scale API management. The demo's gonna be better, but as you can see over there, it's got dashboarding, it's got all the cool stuff that you will need from the business side of things to know how much a utilization of all that good juicy Bitcoin information, financial information data that your own clientele has been consuming and at an individual level, they can individualize dashboards. All right. Oh yeah, before that, all these are the integrations as you can <coughs> possibly see here. I attributed a, or I uh, included a URL pattern, which is basically the block cipher way of calling the block cipher REST API. Just put it in and you can keep on adding in as many of these URL, which we call Epicast, and uh, it will extend to different REST services. Today, block cipher, tomorrow, who knows, right? All right, demo already. Any, everybody accessed that app? Have you seen it already? Okay, so go test drive that app, and then if you have your notebook computers, you will verify some stuff. You verify the fact that uh, you know the same URLs <coughs> that I picked into the mobile app, um, which is basically accessing the block different aspects of the block side for REST API, retrieves the real data. It's not it's not fake. It's not a sandbox environment where it doesn't go out into the internet world. It is actually querying block cipher um, data. Okay, this is what it looks like. Oops, I was testing it. All right, so one cool feature is Bitcoin wallet. So you could actually create your own wallets. So you're gonna see a messy, messy list of wallet names. These are the current wallet names. So if you wanna be um, sure that you're able to, uh, or this is able to work, then create a wallet and then it will show up in this list. So I'm creating some Related to, to Force Asia, so who said Force be with you? Was that okay? Yeah, this was from this was from early 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 days. So yeah, check it out. So the next link you might want to check. Um, of course, you might think this is not exactly Bitcoin, right? Yeah, just hold on a second until I get to the source code. Go type in in this field your favorite wallet name, white space included. We're well, okay with that. I think it doesn't limit you on any kind of special characters. Um, do me a favor. We have Force Asia. Put it with uh, put a relationship with Force Asia in that name. Okay. So maybe I could say Force Asia Bitcoin Track. All right. BTC. All right. BTC. So I'll show you the API shortly. Now a few things that you could know if, especially you could do a curl command, or you could um, do the equivalent of curl and I'll show you shortly using a browser. Take down wallet address, client tokens if you want. Um, you know, you can do screenshots on your phone and you can test this out, right? Or you can do a select and, and, uh, and copy and paste. Just to show you um, that, yes, it's all real data. So you could type the same URL that you have seen in some of the earlier slides in here and you get the latest Bitcoin data. This is actually accessing block cipher. Um, the, this, the entire concept of GPT, BTC, this fictitious startup, writes over these REST APIs, these URL calls. So information that I would need, including height and hash, previous hash, peer counts and stuff, the counts will all appear as long <coughs> as you have access to uh, Bitcoin data from block cipher, okay? So if you were to know how to query block cipher, and here is the block cipher REST API, which I researched and from a select, so, uh, 
Um, smattering selection of some of the APIs is so rich, right? So I don't have um, that much time to build everything for um, all the APIs. I selected a few. I selected one from the wallet API section, um, the blockchain section. Um, do believe I did a transaction API one, which you could test out right now. I think it's the third link, not fourth link, right? And from there, you are able to get data, and data looks like this. Sorry about the lighting. You can test that out. Are you on okay? So again, why all this information, like wallet address, because those are uh, parameters that you're passed in your URL. Yeah, 55 minutes, that's all you give me. Talk all day about this, not enough time. So what happened to that wallet I created? Did it show up? No. False. Hey, someone created a false Asia Bitcoin test though. Ah, right, that's probably mine. Bitcoin Asia Bitcoin track. Nice. What else could you test? You could test the blockchain. I'm going to show you the power of tree scale API shortly with the second option. But what you just saw earlier on, a minute ago, where I used the browser to query the current tail end of the blockchain, you'll probably get this. Am I right? You test that out. Otherwise, you could go, nobody's got curl here, I can tell. You can just go here and just <coughs> that in. You get the same. Just compare the hash. 6E2C, that's the tail end. 6E2C, is that it? <coughs> oh, we just moved again? Yeah, this is real data, so it could keep, oh, yeah, it just moved. Keep updating. Because why? Because the, this is a tail end of blockchain. This is real. This is people out there. I don't know who they are. Uh, Silk Road. <laughs> they are uh, buying and selling uh, bitcoins. Okay. How do I build it? This is the tool. It's called Red Hat Mobile App Platform, aka Feed Henry. But uh, we won't. We don't want to call it Feed Henry because this is the downstream product. I'm not selling anything today. I don't sell anymore. Um, Feed Henry is <laughs> upstream. So if you go to feedhenry.org, um, F-E-E-D, feed, um, you'll, you'll get the source code as well. And if you get it, I think you'll have the link to the GitHub repo, which you can fork it and you can start building the equivalent of uh, the entire tool. Good luck. But why do that when you could already start using a, a, uh, a, a product from Red Hat? But anyhow, the tool comes with the app preview. That's fine. You could already test it. Um, I did a lot of testing on, on the right hand side of this screen. So I want to show you some of the source code. So this was the index.html, the one that uh, you're creating. It links to multiple uh, web pages, create wallet, list wallet, query block, query transaction. We all like the wallet creation demo, right? So let's take a look at how you list the wallet. So you would get this, it calls the key thing here is FH Cloud, like I mentioned. And you, can, and you pass parameters like path and method to the Cloud App. So where is the Cloud App? Here we go. Here, this is the Cloud App. I just go to the wallet JS. I told you it's not no JS. I want you. So I hard coded or baked in the location, the strings, to block cipher, and this is how you will get the query. Now I have a second. URL, and this URL goes to something strange. Look at this, appy, one whole long string of digits, staging appy class IO. Now what is that? Now remember earlier on I mentioned having a scalable API management platform? The one at the bottom where you can aggregate all the services. Imagine there are more and more services. Right now there's just one service going out to the, oh, well, this ser service is already out there. This query is going out to that service, what is that service? Good old block cipher data information, right? That's all financial data information. Oh, well, next time you want to talk to a trading app, some guys are really good at you know exchanges and, and platforms, trading platforms. You may want to query that service. So if that's your business model, fine, and you just keep on adding. Like that, we can talk more. Like I said, 15 minutes too short. Um, what else? You might be already testing the Bitcoin transaction. Um, uh, no JS code. See, the three hard coded transactions are here. You might have gathered that uh, when I was building this, um, it was a different year. Um, some stuff have changed. Most of the code remains. I moved it to a different uh, um, project. Um, the transactions in the year 2014, which is pretty cool. I mean, this is testimonial block cipher or the blockchain, the blockchain 
ledger project. But how about ledger is you don't delete. I mean, this is nothing to do. We're not talking about any any laws, federal laws, of the U.S. or in any Western society that talks about. Um, the number of uh, years that you have to keep and archive all this data, I don't know if they are block cipher is under any obligation. Obligation, but interestingly, this was from the year 2014, and you can still get transactions. If you want to change to something else, you just code that in. But you might be thinking, what kind of model is this? But well, this is a demo, right? So from here, you could uh, evolve. You could say you could query the immediate. Um, well, you could form your own URL dy uh, dynamically. Right, so that's um, something to look at. What else? Tree scale. So why would you, how would you make money? Well, you invoice people. All this is good, you give them a mobile frame end, but how are you gonna charge? Are you gonna charge them per download? You just download my mobile app, did I ask you to, to pay? No, so nice business model, get folks to download a mobile app front end. I remind you, is a front end. So there's still the back end. And the back end, of course, is all that rich, good data that you're reselling on behalf of Block Cipher. Um, so you can see the number of hits from this service through three scale um, API management platform. There's a spike. Well, I was really testing this yesterday. It was a small spike. Hey, this is disappointing. Come on, everybody, just keep testing. And I think this thing will spike up. I mentioned invoicing, the invoice on the cycle, this is real. Um, the money is not real, I just put that in and just as a demo. But imagine the money could go up. So you as a startup owner, you'll be seeing the cash flow come in, right? Uh, could break them down by earnings per month and stuff like that. So how did I put in all those metrics? Oh, this is how I set it up. Out. So it assigns me that little URL that you found strange, wasn't it? With a staging.appycast.io, if I was to go back to block.js, you would see that there. That just means that the URL call now gets cut through API management, tree scale API management. It becomes like a monitoring engine, an integration engine with monitoring capabilities. So that you could know how much you have been making or not making, right? So you could set that up. Now the pricing. Now it breaks up into two. Right now it's a setup fee and a cost per month. Um, now this is a really cool part of the demo. I hope it works. <laughs> I've got time. I think I'm gonna troubleshoot it. Um, earlier version had a little bit of work. and that would be limits. I could put down things like a limit, and I would say if you have a quota. You have a plan. You need to have a plan that comes with a quota. A plan's name is unlimited. If you were to put in, um, say, a quota, uh, that means once you exceed the quota as a client of GPT, BTC, you will not get. What would you get? You won't get any more access. All right? So, uh, bear with me now. Go back to here. Now, these two are the same URLs. One goes direct to Fox Cipher. The second one goes to three scale API management platform first, hosted somewhere in the cloud, courtesy of Red Hat. And then it gets redirected to Fox um, Cipher. It gets the same data. Did you guys see that? Same hash, same hive. It's just that the first description, the source, is different. Everybody okay? Now, if I was to go over to oh, sorry about that, here, I was doing do a quick edit. So this is the usage limit. I say you get to do thirty thousand transactions within this hour. It's active, All right? It's active. Change it and say no, 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 no. I'm just gonna give it to you at one. Now that's terrible. That means um, we have exceeded it. All right. I do the same crow command here. You can see over here. Authentication failed. It failed. Because I way exceeded one transaction already. I got an error. Sorry, no good error handling scenario over here. I just threw it out. An error occurred. Okay? So it's real. 
is real. Uh, we could set limits in quarters. Back over here. Just gonna give them a lot of quarter. A lot of quarter. That's a big number right now. I'm gonna test it out. But to know. Five one five zero five six. Five one five zero five six. Arrow goes away. Remember the authentication failure? You authorized. So that's limits and quotas, courtesy of Treescale, API management platform. Um, back to presentation. <coughs> so test that out. Oh, that we use Swagger as well. Have you heard of Swagger? Anybody use it? It's a great representation of API. So if you want to build a developer portal, um, we can talk more about it. I built a simple one. Um, not too fancy, upload it. Um, you could, it could represent the API uh, that you're just seeing through a Swagger uh, document view, so as to speak. So here's the GPT, EPTC developer uh, portal. Let's click on this link. Swaggery, a very Swagger-like view shows up. There you go. Does this look right? There you go. Yeah. So you can query it, test that out. Call here. Just call it Bitcoin REST API. It's good, especially if you have your own developer community. Fans of GPD, BTC usually will be your potential business partners or already are. And they just want to enhance what you have already built. Simple little mobile app, um, uh, tree scale AP, AP, uh, lower base APCAS. Uh, modules, and then you just want to build more code around it. You want to call that developer portal, that's fine. All right. So this is how it would look like. Uh, this is underneath the source. Um, all the good old JS and JSON code. Like, uh, I already walked through the source code a little bit. I could talk to you more about the source code after this if you are interested. And definitely download the mobile app if you have not done so. Okay, and fork it from GitHub. Um, Good thing about all this is it's open source. If you want to enhance the mobile app client, you can do so on your own. Um, here, here's a neat trick. You saw the editor. I had to go through a browser that I um, walked through lines of code. Um, actually, I most of the heavy lifting wasn't through that uh, mobile app platform. It, it, it did serve as the initial tooling that uh, created uh, the Hello World that I used that as a platform to build the code. Uh, eventually, it served as a runtime as well because it's running right now on the cloud, courtesy of Red Hat, and you're able to access other cloud services, cloud cyber, right? But however, here's a neat trick. You can actually um, do a git pull. Here we go, git clone of the entire project. So what, what were the three sub-projects? I didn't show you the best, I didn't have time. So you could download all three of them, you could get clone all three of them, you have the, uh, at the MS, you have the applica application client, you have what else you have? The cloud app, all three of them, and you can just download them through Git, get clone them to your PC and hack away. Um, I think I did put a documentation up regarding Grunt. Anybody not used Grunt before? Or have you heard used Grunt? All right, okay, all right. Good to ask the negative view. It makes, makes me more confident. And so the thing about Grunt is that it's a really good test runner. Uh, we swear by it in the, um, especially in Node.js world. If you are coding your own mobile apps, uh, make sure you have Grunt installed. It has to be compatible with your uh, uh, the uh, MPM JS libraries that you got. And you know it's a moving target, or rather it's, it's ever evolving. So the versions could change, especially if you have not touched a piece of code for the last six months. So all cool, right? So get the code from GPD BDC. To talk more after this, I'm almost wrapping up, almost. I, I just kept these slides there because the logos are so cool, right? So, I mean, that's me, that's me, my man, Shad Davi from Philly. So you can uh, do a shout out to any of us. Um, shout out to him especially, he doesn't come to Singapore much anymore. So um, yeah, so. Get the slides, I think the, the links will work. Uh, you just kept that all in. All right. Um, 
one last shameless reminder, that's the GitHub repo. Um, initially, the first time I presented it, I had to give it a cool name so that it, uh, I got myself accepted at the uh, Red Hat Summit marketing event. They like this name, so I got accepted. Mobile API management. Uh, I could change that probably the next time I come back from Force Asia. <laughs> So I probably have to new. I probably have to do a new use case. Um, so one part of this talks about see the, all the code that you just seen is there. I even put in Postman collection. Anyone use Postman? Oh, oh yes, go oh, yes. All right, Postman, good tool. All right, Google Postman. So I'm starting for it now. You could use Postman to do some tests. That's cool because the way you seen the test done today. So the APIs, it was uh, rudimentary at best, right? So it was Chrome, it was uh, using web browser. At Postman, you could do a lot of uh, planning. You could do a lot of planning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could emphasize those are reused, especially in a bigger team, right? Um, it explains the same thing I just talked about a minute ago, the importance of using Grunt. We're going to use Grunt when you are uh, doing local development. Why would you do that? Why would you want to choose local development over the nice little tool you just seen. Well, one thing for sure, I might as well tell you the truth, and that's when you get a red hat guy in the uh, seminar room with a microphone, he tells you the truth. I, I, I'm not a big fan of this, what you see, what you get, the uh, test tool there. So, clunky, to me it's clunky. I like Adam, I like a nice editor like Adam, gedit if you want, right? Getting all local Microsoft code, right? Anyone use that? That's all good. So you can download, download that, install that on the PC, use your favorite editor, code away, run grunt, and test it. What else? Coming to the end. And then this is how you do testing. I didn't really put the um, uh, same test uh, scenarios that you had seen earlier on. I did put Postman. So just to make it easy for you to test it all up. All right, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around for the next few minutes before I go on to another track that I'll attend. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes. You made a very quick question about data retention for block site, but I didn't really understand what the point was. Did you mind repeating? Um, data retention. I didn't recall I mentioned, I used the word Something retention. Like the, there's this transaction data, and you don't know yeah. how long. It's old data, like 2014. Yeah, 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 yeah. got it. So, what was the point of that? So, there we go. This is just to emphasize the same thing that we're talking about. So data retention 2014, I don't really know if Block Cypher is under any obligation to keep data as early as 2014, right? Because the movement behind Bitcoin blockchain for that, there, there's no um, regulatory compliance with regards to uh, transaction data that's hosted on their ledger. So I don't know. I didn't really read the T's and C's of Block Cipher. So it's on the blockchain. So. Yeah, it's on the blockchain. But then again, you being, I, I see where you're going with it. But let me let me throw you to the crowd. This is like what if, if I'm Block Cipher? I, I'm in uh, a position. I have the authority. It's my ledger uh, to delete away transactional data. Who's going to stop me? Right? Exactly. But I I don't think they should. I mean, nobody would use it. Nobody would it because they are no longer trustworthy, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but it's just an interesting fact that I came across um, after testing, retesting this every few months is that the same data stays as long as the, your transaction has been committed, right? Uh, there is a, there's a history. That history will not get wiped out. But then again, I'm speaking on behalf of Block Cipher. I don't know every single um, blockchain data provider out there. So maybe that's a caution. It's like, do you think your transaction is safe with everybody that you partner with in the blockchain world? But it's on the blockchain. Yeah, it should not be deleted. It can't be. Deleted. It can't be. Deleted. Okay. So I have another question. Okay. Have you thought about how you would replace block cipher in your? If you, because that's to me the hard part. You say get a full node. You know, read the data directly from the blockchain. Uh, do your own indexing. You need to. Right. You thought about that? Uh, good point. That's a really nice use case. Might, I might want to work on that for the next demo. Thanks. Thank you. It is. It's limited in terms of functionality right now. But I, I only intend. The summary of this is I only intend to spark new ideas. 
So if I see a fork on my re GitHub repo and it goes on to be a big thing, you don't have to pay me any money, but I'll be really happy that you know it happened right, right here today. <laughs> the big idea. Any questions? All right, if not, thank you so much. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of Force Asia, the remaining number of hours.